All right, basketball is back, baby. What's going on? Or should I say you? Dave Lochran with Odd Shopper. It is Tuesday, May 17th, and we got the Eastern Conference Finals kicking off or tipping off between Miami Heat host and the Boston Celtics. We got a couple to talk about today as we do on this show every single day of the week. Our best bets, our best props, whatever it is that may uh, catch the eye. I will say out of the gate, though, when it comes to these game ones, if nothing really stands out, I don't mind, you know, wading slowly into the water instead of diving in headfirst until we get a decent idea of what these teams are going to do and how they look. Now, if there's opportunities and we think they are there and they're not priced right going into game one, we're definitely going to hit on that. We can talk about some of it tomorrow when uh, the Warriors face the Dallas Mavericks. But on this one, it seems like most things are priced pretty well today. If you see anything you love, Hit us in the comments. Share the uh, share the wealth with all the viewers in here. I always try and respond and uh, read all of those comments. And of course, hit that like and subscribe. Then you've got Max Struess over three and a half rebounds. Now this is juice to minus 160, so I can give you an alternative in a second. But there's also going to be a lot of you guys playing same game parlays today. You always want to be careful with them because you can't actually see the odds on them. But with one games, a lot of I, I know same game parlays are going to be played. Max Struess, whether, you know, it'll be four rebounds. You could go to five if you want. But uh, he showed up huge in Miami's game five and game six wins against Philly, right? He posted double doubles in both of them. It ain't going to happen again. But he played 40 minutes in that final game. And he averaged 14 and a half rebound chances across those two starts. Really solid stuff. And look, there's no chance that this guy sustains a 17% rebound rate just not going to happen in this series or any series for that matter he was still very active as a rebounder and in the regular season he averaged just under five rebounds per 36 not bad uh and most of his rebounds in his last series six games against philly were coming away from the basket that should be the case right we expect that to be the case around nine feet from the basket normally you know that's not something I'm, I, I love and of course with it with a guy of his size with a wing player you have to expect that but I don't hate it because Boston's just going to be launching up threes all game. They're averaging almost 40 threes per game in the postseason. And Miami, believe it or not, despite now not allowing a high three-point percentage, they do allow a lot of threes. And I think this should be you know, another low-scoring game, a low-scoring series, where there's just going to be additional rebounding opportunities despite the slow pace. So I think it'll counteract that. A lot of missed shots. Both of these teams hold each other, uh, hold opposing teams to very low field goal percentages so even if the pace is slowed here, I still expect – And forget about that. The pace was super slow against Philly, too. Two of the slowest-paced teams in the league anyway. And he double-doubled in games five and six. You have no Kyle Lowry today. Uh, but if, you, if you're saying, all right, I don't want to same-game parlay this or I don't want to parlay this, I just want to hit it straight, I would go to over 16.5 points plus rebounds. Uh, and you can do that over at BetMGM, where if you sign up using the pinned tweet or the pin link in the comments making it super easy for you they'll give you 200 free dollars all you have to do is sign up and deposit ten dollars more if you want but literally only has to be ten dollars put that ten dollars bet ten dollars on any team to win tonight so either team literally doesn't matter but of course bet the team you like and if either one of these teams scores 22 plus points which they're guaranteed to do you turn that 10 into 200 dollars. sports betting is tough in the playoffs, it can be difficult to make money. So when books are throwing free money in your face to get you just to sign up and deposit $10, you take advantage of that. Simple. No questions asked. Might seem suspect, but it's not because these books simply want your business. It's a competitive market. Sports betting is booming right now. Use the link or use the link in the pinned comments or in the tweet. Deposit $10 or more if you want, but only has to be 10 But put that 10 on any team to win. And if they score 22 plus points, you have $200. You're building your bankroll up without having to actually win anything. All right. Anyway, over 16 and a half points and rebounds at BetMGM, hit it while you're there, is minus 115. And I don't hate it because you have no Lowry. And Struess had a 23% usage rate in those last two games. It's only that two games, but clearly you don't need to use Duncan Robinson anymore, right? Robinson, Struess is doing everything Robinson got that contract to do, that huge contract, except he's doing it better. Shooting threes, playing defense, and I don't think Boston's going to have uh, give Butler nearly as e an easy time scoring 
as we saw against Philly, which is going to open up more looks for, for Struess. So I don't mind over 16 and a half either if you're looking for less juice on the over. Now, going to the other side with Boston, Al Horford over 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. BetMGM also has the best odds on this at minus 115. But Horford was third in rebounding chances among all players in the conference semifinals, right? He was only behind Giannis and uh, slightly behind Joel Embiid, 17 per game. He averaged seven potential assists, and it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because this dude was playing 40 minutes per night. And I think he sees big minutes again today. You're going to need his defense against a much better offense than they faced last series uh, outside of Giannis, obviously. But this team, in uh, this team, I shouldn't say much better, but I would say that there are some there are some players like Bam uh, and, and Jimmy that when it comes to their presence in the paint, you need a guy like Al Horford for sure. Uh, and, and yeah, it wouldn't not much better. I misspoke there because you have Giannis and Drew and, and some good players for sure. But yeah, Horford only had a 13.5% usage rate in that series. But I think we see things change a little bit here because Miami isn't just going to sit back and give Jason Tatum nearly as many open looks as we saw against Milwaukee. The, the Bucs play an entirely different style of defense. We know that. And Miami has some phenomenal wing defenders that's going to make life really tough on Tatum and Brown. It isn't to say that they won't produce, but they're going to have a tougher time. And I think where we saw Horford featured really heavily early in that Buck series before Ime Yudoka made some adjustments and got Tatum going again, I expect to see a little bit more of that. So keep an eye out for it in game one. That could be a good edge for us going into games two and three if these prices don't adjust. So I like it here, even though it's going to be a low scoring game. Uh, and both defenses play extremely well. Horford getting as many minutes as he had to grab us over 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, assuming his role isn't nearly as condensed as it was in the final games of that Buck series. And in this matchup, I really don't think it will be. I think he'll get plenty of open three point looks as well and see his usage increase. I think we can get over 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists for sure. And let's be fair, we've had some good luck on Al Horford overs throughout the postseason. Lastly, under on this game. So yeah, I'm going over on Struis rebounds. And if you wanted to do 16 and a half points and rebounds and we're going over on Horford, but those aren't big numbers, right? Like we can still look to the under here and, and feel pretty decent about it. I know 204 is a low total, but if you look at the numbers, this is one of those games that could be, you know, a 95 to 88 or 95 to 93 game when all is said and done, expected to be competitive. And just know that both the Heat and the Celtics held their opponents under 98 points on average in the conference semifinals. Two good teams. And Miami played at a bottom three pace in the regular season. Boston was not far behind, bottom seven pace. And they have the second and third best defensive ratings in the postseason, uh, first and fourth best defensive ratings in the, in the regular season. And yeah, it's obviously worth noting that both teams boast quality offenses, but it's the first game of the series I expect both teams to feel each other, feel each other out, and, and for the and to make adjustments as the series goes on. But I like the defenses to shine here. So we're going under 204. We're going Horford over 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, and we're going Max Struess over three and a half rebounds or over 16 and a half points and rebounds. If you're looking to get away from that minus 160 on the rebounds, as always, I appreciate you guys. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Lafay underscore D L O U G H Y underscore D. And use that link in the comments, $10 into 200. Just bet a team to win. They score 22 plus points. You're banking it. Easy. $200 added to the bankroll like that. I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Warriors and for the Mavs. Peace.